Good morning, Hammers fans. It's Nick from Claret and Booze, and this is my daily ramble. Now, if you're new to the show, please uh, drop a like on the video, subscribe, do all that good stuff, because um, it does. Well, I say, I say it all the time, it does really help us, because it does really help us. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, well, look, there's been an awful lot floating around about, you know, where the blame lies at the club. Now, look, we all know where the blame ultimately lies. We know that David Sullivan is the reason we're in this pickle. We do, okay? Um, I get that. I get that. But the fact of the matter is, we can't sack David Sullivan. We can't. He needs to sell the club. That, that's, the, that's the only way we get, we get rid of the Sullivan factor. Now, we know that David Gold's shares, there was an issue with his will, so his estate is being held in probate, and that could take anything, you know, anything up to a year even longer in some cases. So the likelihood of Sullivan going anywhere for the next year, at least, is very, it's, it's very small. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. So we're stuck with Sullivan for the time being. I've got no doubt that the guy's going to sell up and go as and when he can because he knows that he's done at West Ham. We know it, you know, and, and the plan was always for him to sell. You know, it was for him to make money out of West Ham and go and, and sail off into the sunset. And he will, he will at some point. But all of that is true. But that doesn't mean that David Moyes is not a reason for, for the current state that we're in. Because the main reason at the moment that Sullivan is now back in the limelight, okay, is because of David Moyes. The fact that he hasn't removed a manager that needed removing, you know, uh, that is down to, to Sullivan. The fact that he's backing a guy who's only got a vision for the next 12 months over a new a new director of football that he's just brought in who's identifying targets for the long term and he's backing David Moyes' targets over Tim Stuyton, that's on David Sullivan. I'll give you one example. If you haven't seen it, I'll post a link in the comments of this, um, of this show and it's to Twitter. It's a video clip of Yusuf Fafana's performance against Arsenal yesterday. He plays for Monaco at the moment. He drew 1-1, one, one. he scored the goal, man of the match performance, he is outstanding. £30 million for a 24-year-old French international central defensive midfielder that is an absolute machine. Have a look at him in that clip and then try and, try and rack your brains to understand why David Moyes wouldn't want to go for this player. £30 million, yet he does, he's not interested in, in him, he wants to go for Scott McTominay, who is half the player and a lot more money. It makes no sense. None of it makes any sense. That's why we're getting frustrated. We're getting frustrated because we've got players at the club that want to leave. We've got players that we want to get into the club that are refusing to join because of David Moyes. All of this is on Sullivan. This is the reason why we're getting frustrated. Now, I've had spats on Twitter yesterday. Well, not spats, just, uh, just, just handbags. But with people that are almost saying, what's the point? Better the devil you know. Better the devil you know. What's the point in getting rid of David Moyes now? What do you What do you mean? We're a fucking football club. First and foremost, we're a football club. Everything you say about David Sullivan is correct. He took our home away from us. He's an awful, awful man. It's all correct. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, we're a football club. And for the last 18 months, the football's been crap. That isn't down to David Sullivan. David Sullivan has backed David Moyes more than any other manager in West Ham's history. He's been backed with three and a half hundred million. 200 million in the last window. And, and you've got, you know, David Sullivan isn't putting Danny Ings up front on his own on a, on a, in a 4 2 3 1. He's not doing that. Um, David Sullivan isn't putting fucking four nails wide left. David Sullivan isn't picking Suchek over and over and over again. He's not doing that. That's David Moyes. So yes, David Sullivan is what we all know he is and we all want him gone. But the problem that we've got is a football. It's a football on the pitch. And, the, and it isn't just a football on the pitch because this guy's being disrupted to everything surrounding West Ham. He's preventing us from moving on. The only way we'll sign any players is if we let this guy go out and sign these fucking players, over the hill players, for too much money. Players that he wants. We can't allow that to happen. We can't. 
I'd rather sign nobody. I said it last week. I'd rather sign nobody than let David Moyes get his way because he is being belligerent. He is. He's being disruptive. He's being vindictive. It's not working. David Sullivan needs to, needs to show some strength. He's got to show some leadership. He has to. He's got to now. That's the reason that I'm currently fuming with him. It's because David Moyes is still here. That's it. Listen, he's appointed Tim Stuyton, okay? So it looks like the club could be or should be moving in, in a different direction in the very near future. So say, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. It's all Sullivan, Sullivan, Sullivan at the minute, yeah? Well, Stuyton, Moyes gets removed. Sullivan delegates responsibility to Tim Stuyton. Stuyton goes out, finds his ideal replacement, be it a head coach or a manager. Let's say Alonso. Alonso comes in. We then fund that project. You know, we get a few players in in this window. We start utilising players that we've currently got a little bit better. We go out, we have a fantastic January window. The football's great. Everything's hunky-dory. Nobody's going to be talking about Sullivan at that point. They're not. No one's going to like him because no, do no one does like him. But the chairman's job, when things are going well, they just get forgotten about. Okay? It's all going back to Sullivan now because it's shit on the pitch. And that is why. So the problem is David Moyes. And I understand what you're saying. I understand, oh, it'll only be so long before, you know, we get a manager in and then Sullivan will start dipping his fingers in again. Listen, what's the average lifespan of a Premier League manager at any club now? It's about two years, three years. That's how long they last anywhere, not just at West Ham. You've got a couple of examples, Klopp and Pep Guardiola, of managers that stay somewhere for a long time and they get backed. Generally, it just does not happen. They move around. Managers move around now. So the fact that we're putting in a backbone into our management structure with Noble, with Stuyton, you know, some consistency there so that when managers do come and go, it's not going to be the end of the world. That's good. That's a good thing. But this is the reason. And the reason I'm making this video is because I don't... It's almost like people have, have now flipped and they're going, it's all Sullivan. Oh, well, for a start, when I say Sullivan out, I want Sullivan's... You can't sack him. He owns the club. If you want him out, go and buy him out. That's what I suggest. So that's a fucking idiot. Um, I am sorry. You know, it's an, it's an idiotic argument. You can't force him out. You can't even force him to sell at the moment because he can't sell the club because David Gold shares are in fucking probate. So even if you, you protested at the moment, there's literally nothing that he can do. So at, at this moment in time, it's pointless. It's futile. All that we can do is affect what happens on the pitch. What happens on the pitch is governed by the man in the dugout. And that man is David Moyes. He's got to get him out. Just get him out of this football club and then everything will settle down again. Everything will settle down. I'm not dismissing what David Moyes has done for the club. I'm not dismissing anything, blah, blah, blah. He has done well. On paper, he's done very, very well. But he ain't done very well with very little. Like I said earlier on, the guy was backed with the same amount of money as Mikel, Mikel Arteta up to this, this summer window. So they've both spent about three to three and a half hundred million in the same time period since David Moyes has come back. He ain't done it with fuck all. He ain't. And look, we've ended up finishing last season playing almost the same 11, barring one or two players, that he started his project with. Nothing's changed. The football's the same. You know, it's it's. he's got a ceiling. David Moyes has got a ceiling. I've said it before. David Moyes is now a firefighting manager. He'll, he'll get another job in January when someone else is in the shit. He's the type of manager you get to bring into your club to plug the leak, you know, to, 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 to stop the leak while the leak is literally fixed, then you move him on. Move him on. He's got a specific role. He isn't. He's proven it this year. I mean, we've heard him, we've heard him bang on and on and on over, over the past three years about this Red Bull model. Yet whenever he gets offered the chance to, to, to take on a young, exciting prospect, look at what he does. Okay? We've seen it. And don't even fucking think that it was down to agents fees that that Borges deal fell through. That is the same rhetoric that the club pump out every single time a player says no to them because they get embarrassed. They get embarrassed at rejection. So what they do is they put it back on the player. They call them greedy players, greedy agents. They did it with Anana last year. 
They did it. They did the same thing with him. They do it every single time. If a player won't sign a contract, they'll publish his his details. You know, because because they'll say, look, we've offered him a contract, but he won't sign it. That's what they do. It's nonsense. It wasn't down to agents fees that Carlos Borges turned. Carlos Borges turned us down. That's what happened. Okay, it's as simple as that. Um, and he turned us down for one reason and one reason only. It isn't because we're a, a tiny little football club. He's gone to Wax. He turned us down because we've got a manager who plays shit football. He's in the last 12 months of his contract. You've got a club where you've got a load of disharmony, even though we shouldn't have because we've just won a European Cup and we're now in the next level European competition. There's loads of disharmony there. There's, there's, there's something toxic at this club. You've even got the likes of Cresswell. So you've got from Cresswell to Skamaka, old and new, players forcing their way out of this club. And yes, you can make excuses for all of them. You can say, well, Cresswell's been offered a three-year deal. It wouldn't make him react like this. It wouldn't make him react like this. And Skamaka as well. Oh, he's homesick. There's always a reason. There's always an excuse. There's always an excuse. Um, this is the most divisive manager we've had since Sam Allardyce. He's dividing the fan base. We're all fighting amongst each other because some people don't give a shit about football, as far as I'm concerned. That is that is all I can grasp because the football has been some of the worst football I've ever seen as a West Ham fan in the last year, at least. You know, two of the games, I'll give you an example, you know, Brighton away and Palace away, two of the worst games of football I've ever seen. It was soul-sucking. So to back this and to want this to continue, this better the devil you know bollocks, you know, David Sullivan doesn't force David Moyes to do what he does. The same tactics, the same way, every fucking week, pick the same players. He doesn't force him to do that. You know, that is on David Moyes. So yes, Sullivan out. I do want him out. I'll always be Sullivan out. But we can't get him out for the next year. We can't. So for the time being, it's David Moyes out. He's the initial problem. He's the one that's got to go in my book. He will make my enjoyment of football a whole lot more, a whole lot better. The players that play for him will enjoy their football more, providing we get the right replacement in. But that is no excuse not to get rid of David Moyes. Oh, better the devil you know. You know, the grass ain't always greener. We're not happy at the moment. It's no reason not to act now. So hopefully we get this done. Apparently Stuyton and Fafana... Stuyton and Moyes were at the Arsenal game yesterday looking at Fafana. After watching that game, if we don't go all out to sign that player, then it can only be that David Moyes has gone, he's found a few, nah, I don't, I, I don't think he'll fit in my system. That's the only way we will not push on for that player because he got a man in the match performance. He looked, he looked, better, than, he looked better than Dick, let's face it. Have a look at the video. So, and that's a £30 million player. Someone, if we sign him, he's probably going to be worth double that in two years' time. Responsible procurement. That's what that is. That's what Tim Steinton brings. You know, if you give it to David Moyes, we sold Declan Rice for $100 million. We'll, end, we'll end up paying $20 million over the odds for James Ward-Prowse, $20 million over the odds for uh, Scott McTominay, $20 million over the odds for Harry Maguire. Before you know it, we've effectively sold Declan Rice for $40 million on players that are going to be worth not very much in four years' time when Declan Rice is still worth £100 million. If you do it responsibly, players are investments. Arsenal signed Declan Rice as a 24-year-old. It's an investment. They'll get four years out of him and they'll either keep him or they'll sell him on for the same money or more. So, yeah, look, it is what it is. Um, I just wanted to get my thoughts out there on this because uh, yesterday on Twitter drove me uh, drove me a little bit loopy. All right? Let me know what your thoughts are in the chat anyway. I'll speak to you soon. Come on, you eyes.